Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here, and today I want to start telling you the truth about Martingale betting systems in a way that is mathematically thorough and right on point. And I'm going to demonstrate why using a Martingale system in a casino loses at exactly the house edge. And I'm going to do this using some fairly sophisticated mathematics. So this is not going to be your typical sort of hand-waving um, lecture on martingales or where I do some sort of simulation. I'm going to prove this to you, and I'm going to prove it using Excel. And you may find that this is just ever so slightly complicated. Um, so we're going to start with the easiest game, and that's roulette. And then in a future video, I intend to cover Bakra. And then I'm also going to tackle this idea of infinite um, piles of money and infinite table limits and all these things that are not real world uh, situations. And we will see that that leads to a very famous paradox. If you want to look it up ahead of time, look up the St. Petersburg paradox. It was one of the very first things I learned in undergraduate um, probability and statistics, and really one of the most fascinating paradoxes out there. And we're going to run into it when we talk about this idea of infinite martingales. So to get started on just um, roulette and really on martingales in general, uh, let me give you these warnings. This video presents ideas that require an understanding of the mathematics of casino games, of probability theory, and of Excel. So um, get ready for some real stuff, right? We're not going to fool around with this video. This video may be hard to understand if you lack these mathematical prerequisites. But let me just tell you what that uh, is means, what's really true then, is that losing is going to happen inevitably if you use one of these systems, whether you understand what I tell you today or not. So why would you want to make the effort to understand this? Well, if you are somebody who has a false belief that martingales work, then you'll understand that in proving they're not working. Or if you know somebody who has this false understanding, you can then prove to them why they fail. And being able to actually demonstrate something rigorously is really the um, bottom line desire for all mathematicians. So that is where we are headed today. Let me remind you what a martingale is. We start by betting one unit, and if we lose, we simply double our previous bet, and if we lose again, we double again, and we continue to double after each loss, and hopefully, inevitably, we will win at some point. And so the idea is that when we finally win, we will have won back everything we lost and one more unit on top of that. So let me give you a simple example. Suppose we have a losing streak with four losses followed by a win, then on our first bet, we will bet one and we'll lose one. We double our bet, we lose that. We double our bet to four, we lose that. We double our bet to eight, we lose that. Altogether, we have lost eight plus four plus two plus one, that's 15, but we win 16, right? So that is a net at the end of this situation of being up one unit, right? So we simply realize we've lost 15, we've won 16, and that um, is a way of always, at, after one of these things comes to an end, of being up yet another unit. And wow, that sounds great. Why shouldn't that always work? Well, it doesn't work, um, and I'm going to show you exactly why it doesn't work. And we are going to be talking about the situation of a real casino, with real table limits, and we'll see how the table limits come into play in the mathematics. Again, in a future video, we will be covering um, what happens with the infinite limits, and that is fascinating. So let's use a martingale on real world roulette. We're gonna assume that we're playing single zero roulette. Well, let's give the player the best um, possible outcome, possibility of winning, and we're going to start by a normal wager, $10 on red. And um, we will continue to wager, double our wager, after every time the um, spin comes up either black or zero. 
and we will use that martingale. And what's going to happen is that because we have this table limit of $1,000, these doubles can't go on forever. Well, count them with me. 10, 20, 40, 80, 160, 320, 640. And it's on our, um, actually, the next double up, the next wager we make, that's going to take us over 1,000, 1,280. So we'll have to bet $1,000 from there on until we win, right? We just... Thousands of the table limit. So that's what we'll bet until we win. And just for uh, fun, we're going to give ourselves a $10,000 bankroll. So we walk into the casino with a $10,000 bankroll. So, all right, what happens when I do this? Well, here we go. Here is the spreadsheet that's going to tell the story. And I want to just talk you through this spreadsheet because this is the, the absolute definitive proof of what I'm talking about today. And if you understand this spreadsheet, then you will forever understand why you get the house edge if you are using a martingale. So let's go one column at a time. This first column is your losing streak. So how long, how many times do you lose until you finally win? And we see that um, we start with the losing streak of zero, and that corresponds to a red on the very first spin. A losing streak of one corresponds to black than red. And by black, I'm including either black or uh, single zero. Uh, losing streak of two is black, black, red, and so on and so forth. A losing streak of seven corresponds to seven blacks followed by a red. All right, so in this particular spreadsheet, I go all the way up to 100 just to really um, show you how these computations can work. And yes, there is a real chance in a casino that you could have 100 consecutive blacks and zeros. I mean, probably not going to happen tomorrow, but uh, there's no law against it happening. The next column may be one of the most difficult to understand. This is the probability of this particular streak. Now, whenever we have a streak, like uh, let's just focus on black, 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 red, four blacks and then a red. Well, the probability of a black, which by which I mean losing, if you look at a roulette, there's 18 blacks out of the uh, 37 spots. And then there's this th single zero, right? So out of the 37, 19 of them make you lose. So we have 19 out of 37 occurring four times before that final win. And that win was 18 out of 37. 37, right? There are 18 spots that are red out of the 37 on the table. So this particular spot is 19 over 37 times 19 over 37 times 19 over 37 times 19 over 37 times 18 over 37. And when you do that multiplication, this is what you get. Now, I use a formula in Excel that makes it a little bit easier to do this. You notice here is my final win, 18 out of 37. Well, how many losses did I have? I look at this cell B8, that's this cell right here, and this tells me how many losses I have. So I'm simply taking 1937 and raising it to that power. So that's how many losses I had in a row. And then I have this particular win. And so what I can do is just use that exact same formula in every single one of these cells. And you can just see the formula up there. It's the exact same formula in every cell that simply says I have a final win and a bunch of losses that came before that. And I simply multiply all those losses, however many of their, those there were. So if you go down this second column here, this C column, that's what you'll get. Now I need to do an accounting of how much I lost before I won. And of course, if my losing streak is zero, I didn't lose anything. If my losing streak was one, I lost my $10 wager, and then I won my $20 wager. If my losing streak was two, I lost a 10 and a 20, but then I, lost a four, I won a 40. Likewise, a losing streak of three is a 10, 20, and 40, and then I won 80. And you see that continues clear up here until I have a losing streak of six. That is going to be losing 10, 20, 40, 80, 160, and 320. All of that stuff added together gives me 630. 
and then I won 640. Well, what happens on this very next entry? Well, in this case, what happened was that I lost um, 10, 20, 40, 80, 160, um, 320, and 640, right? I lost all that amount, but what did I win? Well, I couldn't make that $1,280 bet to win. I could only make a $1,000 wager because I hit the table maximum. So at this point, you notice that my win no longer makes up for everything I lost. So as we go down in this column, every new wager after this one is going to be simply adding $1,000. We're just going to be wagering $1,000. We're going to be wagering $1,000. So every time I lose another spin after that, so I'm simply adding $1,000 to my previous um, total amount lost because I'm hitting the table max and losing $1,000. And when I finally win, I'm making $1,000 wagers. So what am I going to win? I'm going to win $1,000, right? So that's how these two columns work. It is how much you lose before you win. So I have a total loss column and um, how much you win. Now, what is our total wager? So that's simply adding together my loss plus my win. That's going to just account for everything we wagered. Because when we go to compute the house edge, total wagers is going to be part of that computation. So we have our total wagers here, which is simply the sum of these previous two right here. Now, how about our total won or lost? Well, that's easy enough. How much did you win or lose? Well, uh, here's how much you lost and here's how much you win. And so if you simply do a subtraction, I won 10 and lost zero, so I, net is 10. I won 20 and lost 10, my net is 10. And you notice here, as long as we're in the middle of this martingale, as long as we haven't reached the table limit, I'm always just winning that one unit at the end as predicted. The problem comes here on this situation after seven in a row, when I hit the table maximum, my total losses accumulated up to 1,270, my win is 1,000. And so in that situation, I've actually lost money on that cycle. I've lost $270. So this is the first situation where we lose money by playing a martingale, where one cycle of a martingale um, is going to lose for us. Now, if we actually ask, what is the probability of this particular thing happening? Then all we're asking is, what is the probability that I lose? Well, that's simply going to be any time I get seven or more losses in a row. And so I simply add up all of these probabilities going down the column from here. I simply add, add all those up, and that tells me that my probability of losing in um, ru single zero roulette on any one of these um, cycles, right? Any one of these playing until you win, my probability of coming out of that cycle as a loser is gonna be the sum of all of these numbers going down. That comes out to about 0.94% or about a one in 106 uh, chance. So about once out of every 106 cycles, Martingale cycles, I will come out a loser. And this is just a fact, right? This is not a number that's going to change based on some other way I play, when I play, when I come, leave, whatever. This is a 1 in 106 chance that if you play a martingale on roulette, then the, a, any particular cycle will be a loser. Now, the next number is the probability of a wipeout. And by a wipeout, I mean you have lost your entire bankroll. So let's just talk about how that happens. Well, that happens if you lose 17 in a row before you win. If you lose 17 in a row before you win, then the net result of that is that you have lost $11,270. Um, and then you win your thousand back for a net on that particular cycle of being behind over $10,000. And once you're behind over $10,000, your $10,000 bankroll is gone, right? Some might argue that you're actually bankrupt here because you had to bet 10,000 and you didn't have that to bet. But just for simplicity, I'm going with our total result on the hand. 
So once again, I can figure out the, the probability of a wipeout simply by adding together all the probabilities from this point of 17 on down. I simply add up all the probabilities of losing 17 or greater together. And when I do that, I come up with a probability of wiping out of 0.00120% or once in 83,295 um, times you do a martingale. You might say, well, after 16 in a row, I should have known to bet the other color. You know, anyone who was smart would see that you had a streak of blacks going on, so they would bet black. It's not worth talking about. That's also bogus, and the same math would work for that. We just have to say, what is, what is the way you are playing, and then go after that, and the same computations apply. But I'm just saying that um, this is a rare occurrence. There's no doubt it is rare that you will wipe out but it is certainly not impossible at all. Um, so yeah, just think about this particular number as unfortunately it's not one in a quadrillion or one in, in um, a super large number, it's only one in 83,000, right? So it is fully possible to just completely blow through your bankroll um, in this case. And now let me talk about how we compute our average wagers, our average one loss, and the uh, house edge through this spreadsheet. So this number right here, 95.29, what is that? Well, what this is saying is that as we go through and play, our total wagers listed right here are going to be sometimes 10 to go through a cycle or 30 or 70 or whatever. Each one of those happens with a certain probability. So roughly, 48.648% of the time, we'll just win our first hand, we'll only be wagering $10 in total for that cycle. Um, here, this percentage of time, we'll be wagering $30. We see that roughly 0.4% um, of the time, our total wagers will be $2,270, and so on. 0.03% um, of the time, we will be a total wager of 6,270 in a cycle. So the way we actually figure out our average wagers is by doing what's called a sum product. We multiply these two numbers together, and then we add that result to what we get when we multiply these two. We add that to what we get when we multiply these two. And this sum product idea where you have two columns of numbers and you simply multiply, 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 and then you add the results of those multiplications and you go down the entire column doing that, that is a very standard way in uh, probability theory of coming up with a sort of weighted average of um, a bunch of numbers. So one is the list of probabilities and the other is a list of sort of the values. And so you multiply, multiply, multiply. This is how you come up with a house edge for every casino game as well, where you have the how much each thing pays and what's the probability of the thing paying that amount. You do one of these sum products. And Nicely in Excel, there's a function called sum product. And all you do is you list the two columns. So here I have column C4 to 104, those are these probabilities, and column F4 to 104, that's my total wagers. And if I take that sum product, this is what I get. So the average wagers per cycle is $95.29. Now what's my average one loss? Well, it's gonna be the exact same thing. I'm gonna do a sum product of this column, which is my total one loss, by these probabilities. So for example, there is a 3.38% chance that I will win $10 through this particular sequence of events being um, four blacks before a red. So again, this entry right here is a sum product. And in this case, we see it's C4, to 104 with G4 to 104. We're simply taking the sum product of these two columns. So that's how we come up with the average wagers per cycle and the average one loss per cycle. And now what is the house edge? You simply divide um, an average loss of 2.58 per $95.29 wager. So when you take this number and divide it by this number, here we have it, J5 divided by J4, you see right up there. What I get is 2.702, 70270%. Now, 
what is the theoretical edge in single zero roulette? Well, it is because we have 37 spots. It is simply that one green spot out of those 37 is sort of the thing that gives the house its edge. It is 137s. So we see up here, I, if I simply look at what is the decimal expansion of 137, you notice I come up with this exact same number as this computation for the house edge, sort of this long way, um, this laborious way by keeping track of every wager we made and the probabilities of these various sequence of outcomes. And, you know, you do all of this math to come up with this very um, rigorous formulation of total wagers and and uh, total one loss. And you do that division and you get exactly the same thing as if you simply said 137th, right? Why? Because martingales lose at exactly the expected rate. Martingales lose at um, the house edge. And I must say that this is um, contingent on having a table limit and um, not having an infinite martingale, because that's a whole different story. We will get to that. So let's just sort of summarize what our conclusions are. You will lose at exactly the expected rate in the long run. A losing streak will happen, and you will be wiped out eventually if you play a martingale with a fixed bankroll. Um, as I said, the probability of a losing streak where you um, actually have one sequence where you end up a loser at the end of that is about one in 106. The probability of a wipeout strike, uh, streak is one in 83,295 with the $10,000 bankroll. So there you have it. That is roulette. That's all you got, right? It is... Um, just a house edge, and you can think that you have some mystical talent to be able to um, determine when a streak is, you should switch sides on a streak, or, um, you know, when it's time to leave the casino because the casino gods don't love you anymore. You know, whatever you think that you know, let me just tell you, you don't know that. You think you know it, you don't know it. You play a martingale on roulette, you will be a loser at exactly the house edge based on the total wagers, right? And when you are making a martingale, you can see that your total wagers are much larger than the, the $10 minimum wager you started with. So you will lose a lot more. Well, some people may say, hey, martingales don't work on roulette, but they'll work on the, play, on the banker bet or player bet in Baccarat. Um, so, What's next? Well, in my next video on this topic, I will be showing you Baccarat, and you will see exactly the same outcome as in this video. So please take some time to check out the spreadsheet that I presented. I have put a link to that down there so you can just look at that spreadsheet yourself. If you really dig into that spreadsheet, you will see that it is exactly the right computation to prove that these systems lose. Convince yourself of that. And then never play a martingale. All right, play for fun in a casino if you want to, but don't convince yourself that you are beating the house if you are playing a martingale because you are not. All right, you are not. So um, enough said. Look, take a minute. Subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to get my subscriptions up to a thousand. So go ahead, just right down there, hit that little subscribe button. All right, everybody, this is Elliot Jacobson. See you later.